All right, crypto bros, here we go. And that doesn't just include guys, that's everybody. Um, there's a couple of things, well, many things actually I want to go over, and, and I think you'll like it. There's tons of coins I'm going to go over. So uh, here at the beginning of the video, I just want to remind that I will timestamp it. You don't have to watch this video all the way through. Just, you know, jump around to the coin you're looking for. Uh, a lot of these coins are ones that um, I feel are going to be some of the better plays by the end of the bull run, you know, the ones that will have the best, best return. And part of the reason for that is, um, you know, there's a person here on Twitter called Braver Crypto that has a very good track record. And uh, in fact, I just reposted one of his most recent plays. I won't go over this one, but, you know, I'll go over some of the other ones he talks about. Uh, and we'll just look at the support resistance, you know, the overall market structure and, you know, to see what it looks like and if it's a good entry, that sort of thing. Because these are some of the coins you want to be in, I believe. Um, I mean, many coins will do fine. It's just that these... Uh, Braver does a really good job at fundamental analysis and, uh, you know, he's got a team that helps him with that as well. So, uh, I think that that kind of gives you an edge, you know, you can look at market structure all day, but if you also have that fundamental to add on top of it, that's good. And I'm also going to go over some of these coins here on my Twitter. Well, cubic is one of the ones that Braver called, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about those here in a second though. So another thing that I think that a lot of you would find interesting, I, I had a comment not too long ago when I posted something about on-chain data here, uh, here using Na Nansen, it's called app.nansen.ai. I think a lot of you would would benefit from it, but I just understand it is like $99 a month, so it's not cheap. Uh, I can keep showing it in these videos, but I just do one video a week. So, you know, it's really only going to help one time a week. So here's the dashboard. You can look at what smart money is doing and smart money is basically people that have been profitable over a 30 to 90 to 180 day span. Um, sorry, somebody messaged me. I was just clearing that. All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll just kind of go over the dashboard here and, and show some things real briefly because it would take way too long to explain a lot of this. And, and actually I'll jump into it on some of these coins as well to show how you can actually look at the transactions, almost like if you were looking at the Etherscan uh, information, but it's it's just in a more condensed format and it's, um, you know, it's, it's better visually. One second. Okay. So uh, what we're looking at here is smart money token inflow. And basically what that means is it's inflowing into the, that person's wallet. You know, whoever's purchasing this, it's going to their wallet. It's not like it's inflow into the exchanges. So if you got if you got money coming off the exchange, that's what you want to see. That means that coin is bullish, and you could probably go to the chart and easily see that. But usually the ones that are here on the first page are ones that have already been running. Uh, usually you'd have to go back to you know page two or three to find some that are. Oh, this is actually one I wanted to talk about. Is it STRK? No. Sorry, there's one coin. Let me do this real quick. I think it was restake that RSTK. Restake finance. Okay. Yeah, it's a fairly new coin. I mean, we can still go over it, but um, it's going to be harder to really, really figure anything out since it's so new. I'll look at other charts for it here in a minute, though. So back to Nansen. Uh, you know, you can easily, oh, there it is right there, actually, restake. So the reason why I mentioned that one is I've noticed this one's been getting a lot of uh, attention lately on Twitter and, you know, just uh, I've noticed it showing up in smart money flow, that, that sort of thing. So, you know, this is kind of something good to do if you have Nansen. And this may show on the free version, I don't know. But, you know, go through the first three or four pages and just see uh, which ones are getting some smart money inflow. And it could be an early sign and then, of course, you'd still have to look at your chart to make sure the market structure was good. But it could be an early sign that um, it's starting to move. And the reason why I think that's important is because I, I actually have proof that this works. I found MUBI, M-U-B-I, this way. Let me find it here. Uh, there it is. Okay. So I found MUBI way down here. And I actually entered right here and made a 10x off of it. And I think that only took two weeks. 
but part of that was the market structure. It wasn't just because it was showing up on Nansen. Uh, but, you know, it showed up in one of these lists or, you know, maybe I was here on the, uh, there's a thing called signals feed where you can filter, uh, you know, smart money token flow. You can look at uh, central exchange token flow. But what you're looking for, like if you have an inflow on a central exchange, that means people could be selling off. But if you have an outflow like this one, then that could mean people were buying and, you know, sending to their wallet to hold until it went up. Uh, like Prisma here, it's been going crazy. And uh, I've seen a lot of people, like you got 61 times the recent average of people acquiring Prisma. And, and that's for smart money people. So if you see smart money buying something, that you have to take it a little bit more seriously. Okay, so there's that. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I want to talk about here. Let me just check one thing. Where's my dashboard? I don't use this real often, but um, where in the world? Oh, here it is. Yeah, so I have the smart money inflow here. I have the, oh, this is pretty interesting too. Here's a uh, sector flows. So currently, um, you know, during this little dip that we're having, you're seeing a lot of money go straight to currency. Last seven days, 26 million, which I think a lot of that last seven days was probably just over the last 24 hours. So you got a lot of whales that are um, going to, stables or something and it could indicate that you know bitcoin may be coming down we're going to look at that but um you know it could just mean that it's a temporary dip and you know this is a really good buying opportunity so we'll see i mean i'll, I'll kind of keep an eye on that over the next couple of days personally i think altcoins at least some of them look good and i'm going to show that we're going to go over that more okay um yeah, so that's that. You can make your own little dashboard here. It's pretty cool. And you can also uh, watch list people's wallets. I've got Bravers on here just because, uh, you know, it's good to keep a track of what he's in and out of. Uh, but you can do that on on a lot of different people. I mean, you can just find somebody that you don't even know who they are. And, and you know, it's a wallet to watch. It's maybe somebody that bought Mubi. I had, I had keyworded it. Sometimes this help. It doesn't help very often. Um on a short-term time frame, but if you're looking for somebody that's like accumulating something like movie or some other coin that really hasn't done anything yet, you know, you notice a big name, like here's a guy called Roger Lim. Yeah, here he is. Um, I actually noticed he, that he was accumulating movie. So I, I kind of cross-referenced a lot of things and decided, yeah, like right here, that's one of his biggest holdings. Doesn't mean it's ready to go back up yet. It's just that he's staking it. There's a way that you can stake coins and get free BSSB uh, by staking movie. And and one thing I would just real briefly say about staking in general and airdrops and that sort of thing, be careful out there with those because if you come across um, something that seems too good to be true, like, like they're saying, you know, if you stake, if you lock your money in for a year, then we're going to give you all these airdrops. Just be careful with that because if you lock up your coins, it's kind of a trap where now they've got all that liquidity sitting there and they know they have it for a year. And if, if price goes up, down, you know, whatever, maybe the bull market ends, not saying that it would, but what happens if you have those coins locked up now you can't sell and now you got to ride it all the way down. So just, you know, consider things like that. Don't put yourself in a position where you can't sell your coin if you want to. Okay. So I'll, I'll jump into a coin here in a second. We'll just look at it, but let's talk about, um, First, we're going to talk about macro uh, Bitcoin, then we'll talk about micro, and then we'll talk about um, specific alts. Again, if this doesn't concern you, you know, if you're not interested in Bitcoin, that's fine. Just understand that it's important just in the respect that we don't want to see a big dip out of Bitcoin, you know, because that would affect the alts. Uh, but other than that, you know, if you want to jump over to your coin on the timestamp, then just do that because this is going to be a pretty long video, most likely. Uh, so you'll have to jump around. Okay, so clearly, I mean, these should look very similar to the naked eye. And let me uh, get rid of this. We don't need that. Okay. As this came up out of the... So this is a 2012, 2015, and current. So as this came up out of the this bear market in 20... Actually, 2011... Uh, you started getting some market structure, you know, higher highs, higher lows. 
and then it kind of stalled right here at the area between the um, the golden pocket retracement. I can bring that up so it's clearer on that. Let's see. Yeah, so here's your golden pocket. And I use the 0.75. I, a lot of people don't use that, but this 0.75 level, sometimes it it wicks up to it. And that's kind of what I'm expecting at minimum for Bitcoin to do soon. You can see we have this kind of rising. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I would call it. it it's sort of a rising um, wedge, but it's sort of a ascending triangle as well because you got your top here and uh, you're getting a lot of buy side pressure pushing up until it just can't take it anymore and it has to explode you know out of this and it happened the same way every time but of course on on smaller time frames you did have a little pullback every once in a while and uh clearly we already had one back here and we are going to see another one i mean look at this structure here how you got this rounded top and then it kind of bowls out and you got another rounded top same thing happened here and here's this so I mean, this could extend over here. We don't know. I mean, it's it's just not, what do we have here? The monthly? Okay, let me put this on the weekly, actually. So I've got these two on the weekly. We'll just see if we can see anything different here. So clearly, this was our first dip. You know, we had a big move. And really, it was more sideways than anything. But, you know, it was a dip. So basically, this right here. Okay, so so this right here is this. It's this whole structure. And then it kind of, you know, it, it tapered and got really constricted and then sprang out of there. And then once that big move happened after that, it, it came down one more time. And that's kind of what happened here. You know, it, it really constricted tightly. It kind of rolled over and constricted real tightly. And it's going to look a lot different because this is way, you know, way back here. Things look much more compressed than current. Um, so from a macro standpoint, I think we do have to consider, you know, that this could be the top, <clears throat> but personally, I see this as a triangle that's, that's forming and you can kind of see it there. It looks real small, but it is a triangle. And I, I, I really believe that we're at least going to get up here to this order block. And when I talk about order blocks, it's, you know, you got your fair value gap. You'll hear people talking about that. You'll hear, hear people talking about, um, like with CME futures, oh, there's a gap there. It's got to go back and fill that. Kind of the same thing. I mean, you know, this this was a big gap where there was an imbalance. There wasn't any, um, you know, real significant sideways action that happened in any of this. It was just a straight down shot. Like if you go to like a monthly uh, or a two month chart, you'll see just a, a full candle. And and that's what we've been seeing here is there wasn't much resistance going all the way up, back up to here until you got kind of into this area and maybe even a little bit higher. But now you're you're back into this area where a lot of people got trapped. Um, and I've got a whole nother thing uh, about algorithmic um, price action and how you can buy as much coin as you want, but the algorithm is always going to bring it back down. Uh, and stay within its lane, you know, stay within the pattern. But, you know, that's that's a story for another day. That's a, that's a, something you have to really discover on your own. It's, it's nothing I can tell you. You know, nobody's going to believe that just from what I say. But basically what I'm saying is these are like magnets. Usually it's going to come back and test this area uh, that was a swing failure pattern. You know, so you got a lot of people, they thought this was... Um, you know, they thought this was about to pump again. Like, look, look how, look how that must have seemed to people at the time. Oh, well, we're just creating higher lows. Uh, we're in this big channel. You know, we're doing something like this, and we're going to go much higher. So that that's what people were probably thinking at the time. And I mean, that's there's definitely patterns that look like that. It, there's nothing wrong with thinking that way, but just from a market structure perspective, this first candle right here, if you were bullish at this point, and then you saw this candle later, then you should have turned bearish, especially a full candle. I mean, these wicks are fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with, um, with believing that this could be support in here, but 
at some point you have to change, you know, the way you think about where price is headed based on what the chart's showing you. So anyway, um, that's why I believe that this, since a lot of people got trapped right here, could still be people that hold spot from this. And so when price gets back up here, you're probably going to see a lot of sell pressure. And, and really that's kind of what's happening right now. You're seeing, like, if you were to just look at this, this is the same exact thing. You know, these levels up here where people got trapped. And then if you look over here at price action, that's really exactly where it's hitting. And so that's why you're getting this chop here. Could even come down a little bit more. Uh, but I really feel like this is going to hit at minimum. And that's why I made that post how many ever weeks ago saying it looked to me like 47 to 52 K was probably the zone that we would hit first. And the reason why I thought that is because here's another little order block. Now, can it go higher than that? Sure. It, it definitely can. Um, you know, if we, if we take into account what we were just talking about, about this, this right here. So if we use these wicks here as, as a way to say, well, you know, maybe this will be the resistance. Maybe it's coming all the way up here first. And if that was to happen, you know, no matter what this chop looked like here, it could come all the way up to, well, timing, we don't know exactly. I mean, this could stretch out for a while, but, um, you know, there's, there's a order block up here at 65 K there's another one at 58, you know, there's, there's plenty of levels there. It could reject that. I mean, you could even look at this little shoulder here. Um, that's about 51. I think 51 six is what I was thinking is, is pretty, you know, as highly probable as, as what we could hit first, but you know, I gave it that 47 to 52 range. Uh, but if we just, you know, take this macro idea in, into account, um, it's clear that we're bullish. I mean, we're, we're going to go up. It's just these little, we're just people because of the internet and the, the technology that we have, we want things now, right? We, but imagine all those people that have been investing in stock market forever and making, you know, if, if they make like an 80% return in one year, they're ecstatic. And here we are making 80% returns in one day or more. So just step back a little bit and think about stuff like that. I mean, don't, don't worry about the, don't sweat the small stuff. We are in a bull market. Um, but anyway, you know, just taking these patterns into account, there's really no warning signal yet that it's going to come down, but you know, obviously we're in the range that it could, I mean, it, it gave a pretty big dip here real quick back in uh, 2012. I don't know that we'll be that volatile now, you know, as, as the asset has matured, it could, you know, here's another wick that happened in 2016. I don't know what happened. Well, I mean, yeah, this is a good example back here on uh, the 2020 dip. Um, but see how that hit the seven five as well. I mean, every single one of these hit the seven five. Why do I not have that on there? Hang on. I guess it really depends on which one of these you take. I mean, to me, like, see how that hits that order block exactly. Get this other one out of the way. See how that, uh, so you got a seven, five hit, you got a seven, five hit. So that's kind of why I was thinking 47 K would be the, the base case. And that's right at that order block. So, I mean, there, there is kind of a zone there, but, um, where it could be any of this kind of right in here, this thin area, because you got the wick and you got the candle body at the top. So, you know, 47 to 48 K, something like that. So as long as we hold from a macro standpoint, as long as we hold around 41 K, I think we're fine. But if we were to get under that, then we're definitely coming down to like 38 you know, 38 zone. I haven't looked at the exact number because all I care about is alts, but it is important to look at this. Um, let's see. So where's that other thing? Okay. I wanted to bring this one over real quick. So, so here's the things that we absolutely have to have for alts to do well. Uh, anyway, I don't know where my other note is on this one, but what is this daily? I need to put this on four hour. 
Okay, you can clearly see, we'll start with uh, Bitcoin dominance. You can clearly see that it's broken down. I've got a little trend line here. If I step out, got a little trend line that's following. I mean, this is this pattern will play out a lot when you've got a really bullish coin and uh, you know it finally hits an area where it's, um, actually, I may need to shift that a little bit. I don't know. It's something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I mean, it's pretty clear that, um, you know, we, we had this really aggressive move by Bitcoin dominance and now it's having a really aggressive move down, but just understand that this right here is a very, it's a very bullish move once it's complete. So you get this, this hard move down to the downside and then once it finds support, it'll come back up at least 50%. And, and I'm pretty certain on that. So there is going to come a point where either dominance is going to go up because the altcoins are going down or dominance is going to go up because Bitcoin broke through its resistance that it's currently uh, working through. And I think the latter is probably what's going to happen. But anyway, um, currently this is just kind of sideways after this move. This is for a uh, total three... This is just for altcoins. So it's kind of like a, what it did back here. It was just going sideways for a bit, just in a smaller pattern. So once we get done with this, I think it's going to move out of it. Uh, again, that's just my opinion, not financial advice. And then here is total two. Total three is just altcoins. It doesn't include ETH or Bitcoin. Total two, it, it does include Ethereum, but it, it uh, doesn't include Bitcoin. So it's kind of the same view, but... Um, you know, ETH has more market share, so usually. So it's good to look at both of them. But yeah, I mean, look look at the market structure. Like you got, you've got um, clear higher lows, higher highs. I don't see any, I don't see any reason to be concerned about any of this unless you get some kind of head and shoulders and it comes back down to here. That could bleed the alt some. And I guess that could be a small head and shoulder there, but we'll just have to see, you know, it needs to hold this 500 billion, uh, rough, roughly that area. I'm trying to look at that pattern though, to see, hang on one second. I just want to see kind of where it's at. Yeah, to me, it looks like it has plenty of room, but you know, it could pull down to here. I am seeing a, a little dip. I think I posted on my Twitter last night that soon I feel like the dip will be over for altcoins um, and then they'll go up again. But that discount's coming to an end, in my opinion. But again, it, it could come down here first. I, I can't really tell. Or maybe it just comes down here to 487 where that uh, wick happened. So it just comes down here, finds support and goes up. Uh, yeah, so Ethereum uh, against Bitcoin looks fine too. It's it's trying to build market structure here as well. Okay, so micro, just looking at Bitcoin right here from a micro standpoint and, and what it's currently doing. <clears throat> at one time, I had drawn kind of like a, a triangle that was taking place. And um, one person I wanted to shout out here is this guy right here, uh, Crypto Amsterdam. I think I found him through somebody else that I had followed, that had followed me. Uh, he does a really good job of explaining market structure, basically, and and how to find good entry setup. So you know, check him out if you want. It's um, it's at Damsco Trades at Damsco Trades, yeah. And I'll just show briefly what he's talking about. But you know, he does a good job of explaining it. So so just check out what he did there. It's good. So here's some ideas, you know, just like you got some sideways price action that happened and it broke down below that. You're just looking for your ranges, really. Um, currently, what you have, like if I get rid of all this and we just consider this as being your current range. And then your mid range is somewhere. Well. 
probably more like this. One way you can find your mid range sometimes uh, quickly is just find your, you know, your swing failure first. Actually, I don't have the 0.5 up there. Watch how these levels work really well on current price action. Let's see, do I want to get, yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the golden pocket for a second here. Okay. So don't worry about these. I mean, these are just consider those your, um, consider these your one to one, like your zero and your one. But if we were to drag this like that, look how well this respects everything. <clears throat> you know, you've got your, you've got a rejection here. It came down to your 0.75 and created support. Of course, we didn't know a lot of this at the time, but you know, here's your new resistance currently. At one time, it was higher than that, obviously. But, um, you know, as you started falling over, it came to the 0.5, then it came back up to the range, and then it came back to the 0.5 and then lost that support. And now it's at the 0.75. And this is very weak currently. I mean, that, that doesn't look good in general um, because what you're getting is a full candle below these wicks. And so what's your next level to watch for? Well, it would be the swing failure right here. And if you get a candle close below here, then obviously you're coming down to this one. So at that point, this would be the, the range low. And that's really how easy it is. <clears throat> if you're patient and you wait for these levels, and this is exactly what that guy Crypto Amsterdam is talking about, and, and you don't have to do just a single line. You can do like this. So it'd be, it'd be more like, I don't know, maybe something like that. And so as soon as your price action got into this level, um, you know, you could go ahead and take a, a long if you wanted to, but it's kind of like catching a falling knife. Uh, it'd be better to wait for acceptance back above the range. And so if you did see something where it eventually worked its way down here, and maybe it even gets, you know, almost exits out of here lower because they're grabbing a lot of these, um, you know, these longs from down here. So maybe it exits lower comes up and now you have acceptance. Now you have, I mean, even if it stopped, you know, maybe here, now you have a higher low, and especially if you see something like that, you, you start feeling a lot better about it. Uh, you know, the, the more, the, the stronger, like say, for example, this, I'll use this one as an example, the stronger, the level of resistance, like you've got a lot of touches here. If you were to get back above that, then the better you feel about that that continuation to the upside. So let's see what else, what else can we see here? Um, uh, one thing you could start doing is go ahead and do you a trend line on these wicks right here. Cause these, these angled, um, uptrend downtrend lines, they can be used just like horizontal. Uh, in fact, there's fibs you can use for these, these horizontal lick looks, but, um, one good example, let's see here. Okay, here we go. So a lot of times you'll see me talk about, you know, maybe it's best just to wait for your breakout and, and look how this, look how well this works. So number one, you know, you, you did get your horizontal breakout here. Let's see if we can find this level. Yeah. So at one time this was resistance. This was resistance. Here's kind of your imbalance where it began. And that's about where it stopped right at this order block. So it got above that order block. And he, here's a lot of, uh, you know, resistance at one point. It broke through there and it created support at that area. It could have came, you know, come all the way down here and that would still have been fine. But I mean, that's a really strong move. You got a, a big engulfing candle uh, of all of these candles. And, but look also, you know, here's, here's your second confirmation. You got to wick down to this uh, downtrend line. So a lot of times I do like to look at um, uptrend downtrend lines. And, and here's another example. Once this wick happened, once this wick happened, you could have drawn that. <clears throat> and this doesn't work all the time. I mean, this could have just gone sideways and broken out again, you know, just a reaccumulation. But, um, you know, another way you would have known is if, if this continued... 
And I know there's a lot of lines. It's going to start getting confusing. <clears throat> but anyway, you can see, you know, it kept rejecting at that line. And you'll see a lot of moving averages that would create the same action as well. So you don't have to use lines. You can use moving averages. Just be careful using too much information or too many uh, indicators because it can confuse you. Market structure and price action are all that really matters ultimately. I mean, you could trade it this way. Um, the reason why a lot of people don't like to just use this and they like to use indicators is because they don't like to be patient. You know, they just want to look at something, they want to enter it or they want to exit it and, and not consider what price action truly looks like, you know, what market structure looks like. So it's really important to learn stuff like this. Find your, uh, you know, find your support resistance levels first, which again, I mean, ultimately on a macro scale, at least for this price action, you know, maybe not over here, it's really this and this. You know, these two are your larger range. This is just like a, a lower time frame. And then if you pull your, um, I, don't, I don't use this a whole lot, but if you use your fixed range volume profile, <clears throat> starting from kind of where it, it found support, you can see a lot of your volume is right here at this resistance. And then a lot more is at this resistance. You know, these are new resistances. It was one time support. And if we go down to this wick and just consider this range, you know, in total, um, yeah, it. No matter what happens here, it's going to need a little while to, to work back through these high volume areas where there was a lot of trading back and forth going on, uh, and, and it just needs to be wiped out sometimes. You know, you get a lot of people that are um, leveraged long. And, you know, funding rates are real high right now. I had somebody telling me that the other day, which I don't really watch that. But, uh, you know, clearly this was our support right here at this bottom of this range. And then we lost it, came back up. This was kind of a warning sign, I think. Came back up and now it acted as resist resistance and now it's coming down to another support area. So could just keep ranging. You know, it doesn't mean we're going to just fall off a cliff all of a sudden. The area that I think is really important is, is kind of just in this range right here. You can see if we don't, if we don't stop here and eventually if it does close under that, then your next area would be kind of right in here. <clears throat> 38, four. Well, we'll just say around the 38 range, you know, maybe even here, you start getting a little bit more support in this area. And this was, the more obvious order blocks right in here. So I would say 37.5 to 38, you know, somewhere in there is where it would stop. And it can happen. I mean, it, if it does happen, it, it will take the alts down with it temporarily. I'm just seeing some bullishness uh, or some bullish setups that are coming on these altcoins. Uh, but again, Bitcoin can do whatever it wants because the people that control the algorithms that run these markets you know, if, if they decide they want to drop it, there's nothing we can do about it. And, you know, the, the charts may show one thing, but the, the truth of it all may show something uh, completely different. <clears throat> okay. Excuse me. Um, so let's get into some of these coins real quick. I want to show you one of my favorite ones, obviously movie because I made uh 10 X on it, but I'll just show you what I was seeing at the time. So you can better understand what to look for. Uh, this was a consolidation pattern. And really, it's something like that. You know, you got your the the range high, you got the range low, and you got your mid range. And at the time, what I was doing, and I'm not going to go back and show this in my chart, but um, can't remember where I drew this actually. Anyway, it was a clear triangle, but I had it more down like that. I must have been drawing it from here at the time, yeah. So I had a triangle that was going on here and it was on a smaller time frame, lower time frame. And I was telling people, if we get a breakout to the upside and we retest this triangle, especially, then this thing's going to take off. And that's exactly what it did. And I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just showing, and this is important for me. Even the reason why I do videos is because I'm trying to stay sharp. You know, if I'm showing it to you, I better know what I'm talking about. I better be able to explain it. 
Uh, and this thing could have, you know, easily fallen back down. I, you know, sometimes you just get lucky. It, you find the coin and it starts going shortly after. Uh, but there's plenty of information here that you can glean from it. Like, um, you know, there's these levels of heavy resistance coming back up. And it's not just this candle, it's this one as well. Because you got this wick right here, you got that, you got uh, this thing got rejected and came back down. This one did with two, you know, these candlesticks can tell you a lot as well. But anyway, what we're looking at a movie on a um, on a higher time frame is it's just consolidating and it could come down some more and it looks like it is. Um, I mean, you're clearly getting higher lows, higher highs. You know, you're seeing some of these patterns that are like um, ascending triangles that eventually break out. You could just play the ascending triangle breakout in some of these. If, if you're concerned that price action uh, could turn around against you, like for example, uh, what's a good example? Well, this, this is not a good one actually, because this was just a sideways move, but what you could have done here, instead of looking at a ascending triangle is you could have looked at it this way. So always be drawing your lines and see if they make sense. Actually, if we extend that to that wick right there <clears throat> from this wick, you can clearly see that you got a massive breakout. Just understand what this, what this, um, what these candles really represent. So what happened here is your price action came out of this candle for this first breakout and it pushed all the way up to the top of this wick and then price action came back down and closed about halfway. And this happens a lot on a breakout. You're going to get some kind of 50% retracement sometimes if you're lucky. I mean, sometimes it just takes out, it takes off and you never get a chance to get in it. But um, this is a really nice retest on a lower time frame. Like if you jump down to like, a, I guess an hourly chart. Yeah, look at that. So this, all of this right here, I think. Anyway, a, a group of these candles right here was a four hour candle. And you got a perfect breakout and retest. So be drawing your lines anytime you see, uh, you know, price action coming down like this, especially when it starts going sideways, because then you, you start to think, well, you know, this could be consolidation. There could be some people stepping in and buying this after this big move down, especially if you see, you know, some support areas right here, but I'm not saying, uh, that current price action couldn't have come down one more time because it definitely could have, uh, the thing that you're doing is you're saying, okay, I need a parameter to go by that. If it does this thing I'm entering, and if it does this thing down here, then I didn't have to worry about all this downside risk. I waited for, you know, I was patient. I waited for this thing to happen and now I'm in, uh, and then you could have drawn your, you know, started drawing some kind of trend line here as well. I don't know. Yeah, I, I drew one there actually, but it was just short term. So just be thinking logically like that. I mean, I'm, I'm a very logical, analytical thinker. Uh, you know, things have to make sense to me before I enter the trade. And I'll show you some of this as we go along. But currently, <clears throat> currently what I would say is, and I really need to speed this up. I know it's taken a while. This is definitely a strong support area. You don't want to see a candle close below here. If you do, I would say, well, sometimes this is where you can get fibs involved. I've got to add some levels here. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, the 382. There it is. <clears throat> okay, so see how from this local macro low, you know, before this first breakout and all this imbalance happened, where you got this big move up, <clears throat> um, you could you could take your fib, drag it from here to the top. Once you kind of felt like this was probably your your temporary top, and, and again, everything I say here, you know, these are just temporary numbers. Uh, we're in the bull market. I do feel like all these coins are going to keep going up but I do like to try to buy as um, efficiently as I can instead of getting in a coin that's just gonna go sideways forever uh, before it's ready to break out. So clearly 382 is your current support, though I would say it's more like a zone here between this and, and that. Uh, if you were to lose this level in movie, it would come down to, uh, what is that, 15, 15 and a half cents roughly. And just understand it could come down a little bit more even. Uh, currently, what are we down? 
to come down. I mean, this could be enough, you know, it could just be ready to go. And, and in this case, what you would do is just draw your trend line, right? I mean, just like we were talking about, this is all you have to do is wait for a breakout. I mean, you could wait for this horizontal breakout, which there's a lot of resistance here currently, because it's kind of like the midline or the mid range of this complete range. Like if I was to draw another uh, line up there. So just wait for this to break out. It's what I'll be doing. And, uh, you know, if you get a breakout and retest, that's a good buy area. If you get a breakout and retest this line, that's a good buy area. So, um, you know, we don't know the timing on this exactly, but as far as the horizontal support or resistance, sorry, it's about 24 and a half cents. So that's what you can watch for. Uh, let's see, cubic. <clears throat> and sorry, I'm just checking some uh, messages here because there are some people that were re requesting requesting some coins. Let's see. Yeah, I think I've got them all. Okay. So Cubic, uh, and by the way, you can request coins on my Twitter if you want. If, if I have time, I'll get to them. Cubic, what I'm looking at uh, is the same thing we were talking about on Twitter yesterday. To me, it just looks like it's uh, it's falling in that TET coin tet, which I don't think I have it up. Let me bring it up here. Tet. Oh, okay. I don't have that one yet. Okay. So here was the breakout of tet after all of this happened. Currently, I think, <clears throat> and in patterns, just understand that patterns don't always play out. I am kind of a pattern uh, market structure uh, support resistance type player. Uh, and I'll use, use trend lines as well, obviously, but just understand that these aren't always going to play out exactly. In fact, there's going to be times when I'm completely wrong. Uh, but if they do work, you can make a lot of money off of them because you can have a lot of conviction and you jump into the, um, you know, you jump into the trade at what you think is really good support. And shortly after that, it just takes off. And I, I think it's a little bit difficult to know for sure, but I think, let me just bring it up over here so I can look at it at the same time. Yeah, I think what I was what I was imagining is it's kind of doing this thing right now. And so if we see another dip to if we see another dip to like 2700, what? 2800 maybe. I'm not really concerned about it, you know, especially if it you know, I want to see it holds this support. Obviously, you know, at 2600 satoshis so if it does that and it holds there and starts going back up, then I feel real good about this position that I was looking at. <clears throat> but if it doesn't, then that means I had it wrong. And we actually have one little small dip to go. And here's what I mean by that. You know, maybe it's just here and then it, it goes sideways a bit and drops one more time. The reason why I don't think that's as possible, or maybe not as possible, but as probable is because when I look at this structure for Ted, it looks exactly the same. Uh, and these patterns, they just play out all the time. But if we look at, um, let's see, if we look at this as being, you know, really strong support, which it is, and there's more right there. This could be another zone that it dips into. You know, and, and this is, I'm talking about uh, cubic in this case, I'm just using this chart as an example for Ted. So, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be fun, you know, if it had to dip one more time, but I think if it did, I wouldn't be worried about it just because it would signal that, you know, the dip was finally done. But what I'm really hoping for, you know, you got this, um, you got all this, let me delete these. You got all this here where it came down and found support. And now it's, you know, Tet retested that area. So if we jump over to cubic, <clears throat> and we pull it back. And I wish I could get this on trading view, but I can't. But if we pull that back and look at this support, that line is not showing up. Hang on.
Okay, there we go. So this blue line right here, it actually got a little bit under it, almost like a spring. You know, a Wyckoff spring. Let's see. There's that. Let me just jump back over here one more time. I guess you could call it this, maybe. Yeah, so so this line right here is about equal to what we were just looking at on Cubic, where it, it just briefly got under it there. So we'll just have to see. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not saying I know this for 100% certainty, but it looks pretty similar to me. And a lot of coins are doing this currently. That's why I kind of feel like, you know, Bitcoin may go down a little bit, but it's going to find support and then alts can, uh, can pump from there. But we really need that 40, what did I say? 41K area to hold. For Bitcoin. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> I have to excuse me a min minute. My voice is kind of going out. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's see. So um, I wanted to go over a couple of coins that I've been talking about, and then I'm going to talk about the other ones. Again, jump around to the coin you want to look at. I posted this one on, um, yeah, I posted this, this on Twitter. And I just wanted to show real quick what I was seeing that made me feel like this one could be repeating this structure down here. So if we step back and look at this, I mean, it could come down more even. I, I thought maybe it was ready to go. But just understand it, it can still come down some. Um, let's see. Yeah, so there's a lot of, there's, there's kind of like an order block in this area that is pushing against. And I think what we're looking at is some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of triangle there. Let's see what we can see. So this was a deviation right here. Yeah, breakout, retest. So, so you could have drawn a line there as soon as it broke out and retested that you would have felt good. And, and currently here's what you could do. I mean, you don't have to enter it yet if you don't want to, if this is one you're interested in though, what you could do is go down to like a four hour chart and do something like that. So maybe it's just doing its last little push down. And then once it breaks above that, and then especially once it gets above this purple line here, it's good to go uh, targets you know, first move, which would be a temporary, like a temporary uh, holdover, kind of like this, or I guess it could take a, a few days to work out. I don't know. Um, first target's around eight cents to nine cents. And then uh, secondary target, I don't know, 13 to 15, something like that. I, I think it has the power to get up there. Let me just look at the daily here. Yeah, I think it can do it. We just, you know, we need to see that breakout here of the five cent area. Uh, and it can't close below. Where I would get bearish is uh, probably around 0, 0.41. Well, if it gets under 0, 0.4, then, you know, it's going to have to come back into this area to retest. And I was talking to somebody about this earlier. You know, he brought up the point that Bitcoin is in a 50, 50, you know, we don't know if it's going to go bullish, go bearish. Nobody really knows. And, and the market just puts you in those 50, 50 propositions all the time. Uh, but you know, there's, there's, it's high risk it's high reward. So, you know, we play the game as long as we can. But another thing is this was um, at one time, this was support, although, you know, it wasn't real strong support. And it's not real strong resistance either, to be honest. I mean, this one I would say is probably stronger. So, uh, you know, we could see a, a little pause here at the 07, 068 to 07 area, but hopefully it'll just break through there quickly. All right, here is Zeph. I, at one time I had done a, a thing where I was showing this bullish divergence for this move is really the same thing as this. as far as market cipher goes. And really, I, I guess I should be looking at market cipher on these whenever uh, we're talking about them. But uh, I, th I think this is another bullish divergence. 
you, know, you got price action coming down while momentum's coming up. Probably just going to see something like um, like money flow curl back up at some point. And so far, you do have like if you go to, down to a four hour chart, you do actually have a breakout of this right here. And so I'm connecting this wick with this wick. And probably all you're going to see is this just come down and retest it one time and it's ready to go. Once it reclaims this little, what, $19 to $20 area. You know, I really feel like something like this could very well happen. And then, uh, you know, once you get to this point, there is another downtrend resistance here. Let's see, I've got to connect that better. So I'm going wick to wick here. And you may see a rejection there, you know, once it does come up and it may just need to play this out a little bit before, you know, eventually working its way back up. Just understand that these, anytime we come down like this, this creates new resistance areas coming back up. And so any of these little uh, order block areas are going to offer resistance. You know, these smaller ones aren't going to be a big deal, but you know, you're going to see some resistance on these coming back up. And then once it works through all those, then you got another blast off. And that's what this looks like. You know, this thing, uh, it had to play out a bunch and then come back and retest and then finally break out and retest that breakout. And then, you know, once it finally got above this resistance, it's gone. The same thing here. It needs to get above this resistance eventually. But here, here's one of your major levels that needs to get above right here. Because this was once support. I may not have this perfect. Let's see. A bit more like that. I don't know. That's that's why I like to use a zone. It's somewhere in this twenty-seven dollar range. Anyway, could be as low as uh, twenty-six to yeah, twenty-six to twenty-seven. Once you get a break out of that and a retest, you're gone. You, know, you you can feel real good about it. And I really think, um, well, no, yeah. I, I do want to keep it that way because if you think about it, this could just be a sideways range for a while and then finally it gets out of it. So uh four hour candle under this level, then you're going to see one more dip and it could come down here to uh, you know, 1160 or so. I don't think that's going to happen because it, it's already had a pretty good dip here. 70%. I feel like this could be the bottom, but you know, we'll just have to see. Uh, can it go sideways longer? Yes, definitely can. But that's why the only thing you really need to watch if you are wanting to know whether you're bullish or bearish is you watch for this level right here to be broken and retested. And once you see that, I mean, there's there's really nothing stopping it. All right, kind of the same situation here with Cass. At one time we had talked about, um, I don't remember if this was on a four-hour chart or what, but we had talked about you know, when you got money flow that crosses from red to green, that's when you start to get your extremely bullish momentum. And then once it crosses down green to red on a four hour chart, then either you're going sideways for a while, or eventually once the, you know, red money flow gets thick, that's going to show that you're having this, uh, you know, this correction happen. And if we look at it from a, a high time frame perspective, um, I mean, we could we could just go ahead and pull a fib here from the imbalance where it first started its breakout. And you've hit the 382 perfectly. And look right there on the um this level right here. You got a perfect rejection. I would consider that a very important level. Let's see. And really I would say it's more like that. I mean, the wick got above it, but this is where most of the uh, the price action connected, and, and this is a fresh chart for me. I haven't done any um, any lines or anything on it, but treat my lines as as kind of a zone again, because there's no true one line that you can use. Uh, you know, the thicker we can make these lines, the better, because it's 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 just truly more of a zone than anything, because you got wicks that are going to take place and stuff like that. 
so, but fibs really help. I mean, look at these lines that this fib is respecting currently. So you could just use these fib lines and that's fine. I mean, look how this wick right here touched and this wick touched. You're trying to connect wicks. You're trying to connect um, candle bodies. Can it come down here to the shoulder? Absolutely, it can. Uh, let's see how far it down it is. I think this is kind of the same. Just know on these that have you know, done a 50X or a 25X, whatever it is, they just need more time. Oh yeah, this one doesn't hasn't really come down much, has it? I think this one could come down to here. Let's see. I want to see what the, um, wow, this one's gone up a lot, hasn't it? So this is one of Braver's picks. I mean, if you're looking for somebody on Twitter to, um, to follow, you know, he gives these free picks uh, sometimes. That's 110X from the bottom. I think he got in pretty close to the bottom from what I remember. And he got his members in close to the bottom. So just understand when a, when a coin does a massive move like this, there's got to be some kind of slowdown, right? I mean, it needs time to rest. Um, you know, all these people that bought low that have made a fortune now, you know, millions of dollars, they've got a lot of coins to unload. And, and that's why you see this. That's why you see downward action or that's why you see sideways action sometimes. So you've got people that are selling and you can call them whales. You can call them uh, market makers either way, but you got whales that are selling at the top and it takes a long time to sell for them because if they were to just sell it all in one go, they would drop the price dramatically. I mean, it would just be one big wick if they had a bunch of it. Uh, so that's what they call distribution at the top of a range. Uh, you know, this is down here. I guess you, you'd call this your accumulation area. Really, it, it would probably be more like that if you knew about this project early, <clears throat> like Braver did and Esteem. Uh, so, you know, if you look up Wyckoff distribution ranges, you'll, you'll start to see a pattern like this kind of, and it doesn't mean that, uh, CAS is done, not, not by any means. It just means that it has to have a rest, uh, new wallet holders have to come in. I'll show you here. Uh, actually I've, I've kind of stopped doing this and I, I meant to go back to it. So here's CASPA somewhere here. I'm going to look up CASPA in the system for Nansen, here it is. Okay, so let me make sure I've got the right one here. So it's um, 1171, that's the wrapped ether price though, I think. No, okay, that is correct. Okay, so this looks like the right one anyway. So there's been a, you know, a negative 150,000 net withdrawals off the exchange. So, so people are buying it currently, which is fine. I mean, they, they may be right. Maybe it is going up. Uh, smart money holders, there's two currently, which seems strange to me. I don't think, this doesn't seem right to me. I think there's a lot more people that are in this. Maybe I've got the wrong one. Yeah, I must have the wrong one. I don't know. Let, let me just see if I can pull up the contract address here. <clears throat> Again, this is like stream of consciousness. Uh, you know, when I do these videos, it's just stream of consciousness. I don't, I don't do any editing. I just talk about whatever pops in my head while I'm looking at these. So, you know, bear with me on some of this. Yeah, I don't see a contract on here on CMC. I'm sure I could find one if I looked for it. <clears throat> but one thing I will say is on the weekly, the VWAP, this yellow area, is turning up. Uh, so it's going to take it some time, but I don't feel like it's done. I feel like it's it's going to keep going up. But um, if we were to put like a, like a trend line on this, I do definitely believe that it's probably going to come back to the trend line from a macro standpoint. And if it did that, then, and it could even, you know, dip a little bit below it. So the two targets that I would be looking for because of these order blocks here, I mean, it usually comes back to these shoulders and I'll show you that on other coins as well. Uh, the area I would be looking for probably in here, but you can start looking here as well. Yeah. I mean, you can, you could, it's really a big zone actually, but 
somewhere in this shoulder, you can start looking. That's on average, that's like uh, 0.083, 0.075. And I, you know, there's there's even the possibility of something like this. But this one's less likely, 0.065. So let's just see. And I know there's a lot of people out there that love Caspa. Uh, I'm not saying anything bad about this coin. I think it's going to be very bullish once it gets done with this dip. Um, if you are one of the people that think that somebody talking about dips in your coin is going to affect price and cause people to go and sell it real quick, um, it's possible they could. But just understand that this market, from, from my opinion, my perspective, and my experience, this market is run by algorithms. If somebody was to dump a bunch of coins all of a sudden, it's going to uh, bring the price back up. And you can watch it yourself if you want. You know, you can go and try to buy something and just, you know, fat finger a market buy. And you just watch what the algorithm does. It It's going to, it's not all, all organic price action is what I'm saying. So, um, you know, you can look into that if you want, or you can just blindly believe that somebody talking bad about your coin or talking about, you know, saying your coin's going to come down before it's ready to go back up. You can believe that that's, uh, that that's what causes market movement, but it's not. Uh, so, you know, cu currently a lot of resistance right here. Uh, we are down 35%. If we went down to this one to be 46, if we went down to this one to be 51. And if we went down to this one to be 57. And I just want to throw this out there. I don't, I don't know that this would happen, but this could be, this could be the line that it stops on to. You know, maybe it just retraces this full imbalance off of this uh, ascending wedge. And, and then this becomes like a shoulder. Here's a head. And then here's another shoulder eventually. And then it finally breaks out. You know, it, it's, it's going to be a big range for a while, you know, for a little bit anyway. I would suspect, you know, just, just based off of this rejection that it did here, that's not a good candle. Um, you still got six hours for it to close. I mean, it could push back up, but right now at minimum, I would wait for this 11.5, 11 and a half cent area to get a good four hour candle above it. If I didn't see that, I wouldn't be uh, entering this one. Yeah. So those are your levels. Hope that hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to save this and I'll come back to it um, in the future, but on the four hour chart, you know, th this right here, actually, you know, if it was to hold this line, which I don't think it's going to, you know, maybe my line's a little bit off. Let's see. I guess I could drop it down there because it's kind of like a zone. You would have to have an immediate support hold here and move back up. If it loses this line, then it's coming back down here at minimum. And, and the RSIs are pointing down. So in my opinion, I think you're coming down to a minimum ten and a half cents, maybe ten cents, and and maybe it just goes sideways. You know, it doesn't have to come down here, but if it's not going to come down here, then it has to go sideways longer. So just understand that coins need time; they've got to rest. Uh, let's see. I just want to see <clears throat> here on uh, Tau. It is up twelve x, so that's not bad. I mean, it it probably doesn't need as long. <clears throat> it probably doesn't need as long of a of a rest as most. It's kind of like movie in that way. In fact, kind of makes me wonder. Sometimes if I if I find one that's like up 10x like another coin, sometimes I'll bring the pattern of that chart over and just see what they look like together. See if there's any similarities, you know. And I'd say there kind of is. I mean it, I would compare this to that. So maybe, yeah, <clears throat> I, I think what's going to happen with Tau, maybe something like this. And don't get too caught up in this because pattern trading is good, but you still need market structure to back it up. So I would say something like this, just in general. You know, this is kind of like that. This is that. This could be this, and now you're just coming down for one more little dip, and then you're gone. Kind of looks similar to me. 
but in general, um, let's see, let's just back out of that. And actually, before I get into this, let's look at, uh, I just want to check this one more time. It's weird that I couldn't find Caspo. Yeah. Maybe this is just DEX trading. Maybe this isn't uh, central exchange trading that it's bringing up here. But we'll look at Tau. Let's see. That's wrapped Tau. That's not going to help me. Some of these aren't in here. I'm just looking at something here on CMC. Just see if I can get a contract because I really want to be able to show these to you. Yeah, that one's not showing a contract either. Well, some don't. I'll keep looking on each one we look at. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Tau, 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 tau. There we go. All right. So your range currently, it's pretty clear it's something. I mean, I would just consider this a deviation. Somewhere in there and here, maybe. Yeah. So either further range or let's just see what the fib shows here. You just find your local low. Well, actually, you could pull from this one. Yeah, that's fine. But that's a more, yeah, it's a more longer time frame. Okay. So 382, you hit. There's a chance it could dip down to the 0.5 here. So um, I would consider this probably the very low for it, 222. Uh, that's only going to happen if you lose this 382 level. So as long as you hold this purple line of 250, you're fine. Uh, and then at that point, all you're waiting for is this. You're just waiting for your, you know, your trend line to break back up and retest and you're good to go. If I had to guess, um, I don't know, something like this, maybe that, and gone. It's kind of like an inverted head and shoulders, so that would make sense. <clears throat> Give me one second here. I just want to make sure nobody else uh, requested a coin. Okay, yeah, so I really like that idea for Tau. If it holds that level at 250, you're, you know, don't worry about all this. It could just break out of that and retest and go. If not, I think this is the very low, probably. What did I say? 222, yeah. yeah I really don't see it coming down further than that. But, it, you know, if you notice that and it does happen, just message me on Twitter, at bike for sale. At bike for sale, like that. And we'll look at it. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> Inc. Inc. AI, I don't know how to say that, ENQ AI, here's that chart, and obviously it had a big dip. I mean, I, I think it's probably already found its support, but we're going to look more closely at it. Um, this one you can look at on, on Nansen, so that's good. I think I have it on my watch list, actually. Maybe I don't. I think it comes up, no problem. And there's a lot of smart money on this one. Actually, let, let me verify the contract here. Got to make sure I get the right one. Where is that at? I think it's this one. Oh, right. Okay. So it was noise GPT at one time. So this would be an old contract. Where's the new one? I wonder if this would still work. They're using the same contract, maybe. Well, they wouldn't be, though, would they? 0038. Let's see if CoinGecko has the right one. Yeah, 
Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it is a different one. Okay. Yep, that looks better. All right, so <clears throat> it shows just at a glance, Smart Money has sold off uh, 78,000 over the last 24 hours, but it's also left exchanges at a rate of 22,000. So it, it's not exactly balanced, uh, but you've got to change a plus 12 change in total holders over the last 24 hours, and that's Smart Money. So if we go over here and look at, um, let's see if we look at Smart Money, We have here, yeah, the, the total smart money holders has been declining, but look how the amount of uh, smart money balance seems to have found a support here. So I think it's going to start going back up and we'll look more closely here. What the seven day change shows. Okay, so it's the last 30 days. You can see, <clears throat> you can see that um, there's been a lot of smart money accumulating this. So people obviously see value in the project. I think people that don't really understand market structure uh, or don't see the things that we see are concerned that it keeps going down. And they can't tell that it's actually started going back up. At least I think it has. Uh, if you take these two wicks here and here, you're getting a perfect retest currently. And this little um, this little squiggly looking structure, I, I remember back in uh, 2021, I used to see this all the time before a coin was ready to move. And, and I'm hoping that's the case here as well. But um, clearly... That's kind of like a spring that happened. It got under the support. I think this is our support. This would a, a deviation in a way. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to, you could call this, this the support, but I kind of like that level better. And then, um, yeah, here's our resistance currently, roughly kind of our resistance zone because you can see those wicks keep hitting it. It was support back here at one time. So really all we have to see is this. You know, if it wants to keep going down here, if it wants to go sideways, that's fine, but we need acceptance back above what is that? Zero one five, and once that happens, you're going to get a pretty good move out of it. Uh, the only thing you don't want to see, you know, for bullish action anyway, is a four hour close under this zone. You don't want to. I don't know if there's much to look at here. Oh, okay, so it is showing our four hour there. So you could pull this down here if you wanted to just look at it from a, a four hour perspective. And uh, yeah, I mean, this would make a lot of sense because. This was resistance recently. And if you get a perfect retest of this resistance here, even if it goes sideways for a while, then, I mean, it's looking real good. I like it. I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, you know, things are looking fine so far. And I guess on a four hour chart, you'd really want to see more like this. Acceptance back above 016, 017, something like that. All right, we'll jump over to DNX. I'm going to try to go a little bit quicker here. Okay, bear with me a second. I'm just getting the contract to make sure I got the right one. Of course, it doesn't have it there. Okay, I don't really have a contract on that, but let's just see if we can find it. What is it, Dynex? Yeah, Dynex. Okay, it looks like it's not on Nansen, which is odd, but we don't need that. We don't really need that. Um, let's bag. I'll always step out and look at the weekly or, you know, look at the... The three day, what's the all time low on this one? Just want to make sure this chart's right. All time low. It doesn't actually show it here. Hmm. Wish it would. Oh, here we go. Maybe 
Is it six four? No. No. Anyway, this could be the bottom. I, I don't know for certain. But if that's the case, then it's up 12x. And this is kind of the same case with movie and uh, what was the other one we talked about? Tau, maybe. Kind of looks similar in a way. Let's see. Yeah, not quite, but uh, I mean, clearly we can find some support areas and it won't be a problem. Kind of had these off at the at one time. Yeah, something like this. It's close. I mean, I could even get rid of these and make it clearer. Don't have to worry about these upper boundaries. So at one time I had this um, this trend line connecting these two wicks right there. And I knew that as soon as it had a four, well, actually this is a weekly. So really once you get your plan in place, like say if I was looking at this and I already had these wicks connected, then you could go down to like a daily or something. And then as price action happened, I mean, look at that perfect retest of a line that I had previously drawn already. Um, yeah, I'm just showing that these these methods work. You know, don't fade these methods because you can make a lot of money doing it or you can save yourself a lot of money. So on the daily chart, had a perfect retest of it, currently getting resistance at 80 cents. Uh, if we pull a fib from here, we are sitting right on the 0.5 line. I think there's a chance you could come down here to 54 cents to the golden pocket. And sometimes you can use these uh, fib lines as um, your horizontal lines as well, if you want to draw your horizontal lines to them. But just be careful, because if you got your fib placement wrong, then you're going to have wrong lines. Uh, so <clears throat> what I would say about that is just make sure that you're following good market structure uh, methods. You know, wherever you had previous support, like here, if it breaks below, that's a warning signal. You might want to be out at least until it gets back above and retests it uh, and, and reclaims that area. And then same thing here. At one time, this was resistance based on this wick. And now it came down, created support, had a little bit of a warning there, came back up, created a deviation to wipe out some, uh, you know, some people that were short up here. Or to, you know, of course, make it look like a fake breakout and and cause people to get trapped here with their bags. And so now what you have is it broke back through that support. And now it's down to this next support. Now this is resistance, what was once support. So hopefully that makes sense. I know I've, I've gone over it plenty of times, but um, you know, you'll know you'll start seeing it more and more. Like, like the second that you open the chart, you'll just say, okay, I can clearly see where my support resistances are. I'm going to draw lines. I'm going to respect them. And, uh, you know, patience is the key at that point. If you're not willing to be patient, then any of this stuff that you're drawing is not going to matter. Okay, so 80 cents is our current resi resistance zone. I need to make sure I say it that way because... It's not going to be perfect. Anyway, it's somewhere in there. Um, so we need to hold 60 cents roughly. If we don't, then we'll come down to here to 46 cents. And it's definitely not getting into that, I don't think. Currently, you're down. I think you're probably down enough, maybe. Let's see. I'm just looking at the pattern here. Pattern looks like it could be done. Let's just draw a trend line. Yeah, it's respecting that trend line. Watch for something like this. Breakout, retest, reclaim, reclaim, and gone. Uh, doesn't have to work out exactly like this. You know, it could just go ahead and get above immediately and then start moving up. But, you know, those are a couple of the ideas anyway. As long as you keep that four-hour candle above 60 cents, you're fine. I, mean, I really like the look of this just because here is a higher low. Here's a higher low. So, you know, really solid market structure from a macro perspective. It's just going sideways, reaccumulation, and then finally it'll break out. Okay, AGRS. Let me look this up real quick. I think this one, I don't know if it had a migration or a name change or what, but the chart is it's really strange. I mean, 
anytime you have a big gap like this on an alt chart, it usually means that there was a migration or something. So maybe somebody can answer that. Um, not that it really matters. So we'll look at this on Nansen here and just see what we see. Okay, good. It brought this one up. We'll look at smart money first. So you got uh, smart money has sold off about 41 K, but somebody else, you know, some other smart money has added to their position and taken it off the exchange at a rate of 30 K and you got 25 new smart money holders. I think let's see what it shows. If it'll load, here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. You got a massive increase. When was this? So 27th of November, and then it came down on 22nd. And now it looks like people are reaccumulating. So this is probably a really good sign. And, and again, I think this is for a lot of coins. This is what's happening. Uh, I, I feel fairly confident and it's not financial advice. I don't mean to get people's hopes up and I'm not trying to, uh, you know, shill as a bull just so I get clicks. I don't care about the clicks I get on my video, but I'm, I'm just saying what I see and what I see currently in the charts is a dip to scare people out and then a, a resumption for the altcoins. And the reason why I say that partly is because a lot of these coins, uh, like CRV, Reef, uh, you know, a lot of the DeFi stuff hasn't even had its chance to to get over a hundred percent gain. Uh, and then you got things like Mad, well, Maddox just now getting started, but you got things like ICP, um, Soul, you know, so, some of those little bit higher cap coins that have already made their run. And usually, what happens is the money flows down to the uh, smaller cap. So I really think that our turn is coming uh, for these lower caps. So just be patient with it. Let's see. And, and I really mean that in the short term to midterm. I, I mean, obviously long term things look really good. So I had a really big sell off here from somebody that had 7,000, but you know, you're sprinkling some buys in there. And these are just, you know, transactions that are happening within, within the hour, basically. Let's just see what this looks like here on smart money. The last 24 hours, it's probably not going to show much. Yeah. There's somebody that sold. Last seven days. Yeah, you got a lot more buys over the last seven days. So somebody's accumulating top transactions over the last 24 hours. Yeah, there's some big purchases happening. So that's good. Anyway, I, I mean, it looks good to me. I'm, I'm not really concerned about it at all on this one. I think you're just seeing like a reaccumulation. And there's some really big token millionaire smart money people here that have over, you know, they, wow, they own five to 6% of the total. Hmm. And that's some big accounts there. Wonder when they purchased, let's see. I mean, you can really dig down here and look at people's, you know, when they started accumulating, it looks like this part of person started accumulating in late November, maybe, and they put 2 million, is that right? Why is it worth 7 million now? Well, I guess it is, huh? Oh yeah. Okay. So that level was a lot lower. Yeah. So this was a really good purchase for them. Um, they've just been accumulating. You can actually see it in their transactions. If you go here, well, maybe not. I don't know why that's not loading. That's weird. They must've sent it over from another wallet or something. Oh, that's why. Okay. So actually they started accumulating December, 2022. So look how smart that was. I mean, this is kind of like Braver's picks. He tries to find areas, uh, him and his team try to find areas that there's just a, a consolidation happening and look how patient this person had to be. They purchased in, um, January, 2023 price didn't really do anything. Cause this is, this is basically showing uh, the, the accumulation of value over time. So when he first purchased it or her, it was worth about, you know, 150 K and then right before the big pump, it was worth about 400. And then all of a sudden it just took off. It's kind of like being in narratives early. If, if you're not willing to buy when price is boring, then, and some of that's happening right now in reaccumulation on some coins, if you're not willing to do that, then you're not going to be able to take advantage 
of the big gains later. Uh, you have to buy when it's boring. You have to buy when it's scary. A lot of times, if you know you're in a bull market, uh, if you wait until things have already gone up like 10 X or something, um, and it's currently pumping, sometimes you end up getting in at the very top. Uh, so, you know, just be aware of some of those things. Okay. So that's AGR. Did I talk about it? Okay. I didn't really talk about the price action yet. So structure wise, let's just see. I mean, this is kind of a disjointed chart, so I don't know. I think this is going to be pretty close to being right, <clears throat> but I want to make sure that, uh, that I don't tell you wrong. Wonder if the fib can help here. Yeah, that does look right. There does seem to be some kind of support resistance there. Yeah. So I had already drawn my two of my lines and they hit the fib perfectly. So I feel pretty good about that. Um, there is another line down here. I don't think it'll come down to this one. Actually, I'm not even going to add that one. I really doubt that it comes down there because this one, well, it's down at 30 X. That's kind of surprising. I didn't know it was that much. So you came to one shoulder here. What are we down? 50. So you got, sometimes you'll get these three drives, uh, to a high or three drives to a low. So here's one, here's two. And I think this is going to end up being another rejection and you're going to get a third down, a third move down to here. What would that give us? If I can see like a 60 to 70% correction, now yeah, it's pretty close to 60. I mean, it, I really doubt that it comes down here. The 0.5 is a possibility though. So currently what the way I would look at it is this. I put my line just like that. If you lose this 0.25, this purple area here, if you get a four hour candle under that, you're coming to here. If you get a four hour candle under that one, you're coming to here. And you're probably going to stop here if that happens. Something like this. Don't worry about the timing that you're seeing below here. I, I don't know what the timing is going to do. But, I mean, even if it did come down here, it's it's really not that long to wait, uh, you know, for a really good move. This is a strong coin. I mean, look at, look at the verticality um, it had coming out of this bottom. And what did we say? 20x? No, 30x. Wow. That's impressive. That's a really, and you know, what's funny about this pattern right here is that this is exactly what Inc. ENQAI is doing. It's exactly what mind is doing. BTX. I mean, we got into these when they were at their temporary top, but they're going to break out. I mean, they're, they're going to make a really good move and I can actually prove that to you. Where is that one? Inc. I thought I had a better chart on this one that had more. Oh, I know what I'll do. Hang on. <clears throat> I'll bring up the decks. I think it has more. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So what I'll do is I'll take the bar pattern off of this. We'll just copy it over real quick. If it'll copy over, I think it does. And I have to size it down. I don't, I don't remember what I had it add on there. Something like that. Or is it that? It may be this actually. Well, Yeah, I think, I think it's kind of like that. Some of these have a different, um, they have a different verticality or uh, aggressiveness to them. So I think what you're looking at is this right here is all this. Some, some of them kind of point down before they break out. Some of them point up, but that looks about right to me. Yeah. So you're never going to get it to match exactly, but I think we're looking pretty good on ones like ink AI. But yeah, th this looks pretty good to me. Um, yeah, so I, I think, you know, if you were to just take this into account, you know, it, 
is this this yes in a way it is but it just looks different um you know you get a rejection here you get kind of a rounded top and then you get another rejection so you got a rejection there you got a rounded top and you get another rejection i mean that, that's kind of how i see it anyway and if we were to um we're to do this let's just see if we can get any more information we're to pull it like that does that make sense 382 yeah 382 rejection on this full range right here at this shoulder that it's currently doing 382 rejection right there on this shoulder and it actually did dip a little bit under this but i would be surprised if it did it i, I really like this idea can it dip a little bit under yeah but i like uh at least a good buy area anyway 325 if this doesn't hold i mean you got to have you got to have some ways to say okay if this doesn't work then this this is this is going to happen almost be like a computer like an if then statement if x is greater than y do this if x is less than y do this you know, that kind of thing all right that's agrs we're going to look at uh reef now reef looks fine i mean it it it's really taken a long time to do anything, but I think once it does, it's going to break out. These are a little bit higher cap. I think this one's, um, look it up here. I know some of you aren't interested in these, but these are some that I posted on my Twitter there. Yeah, well, it's a 50 million market cap. That's, that's actually still pretty low. Uh, but it's one of these that takes a little while to do anything. And once it does, it breaks out hard. And, and I like these targets because, you know, here's one order block, here's another order block. And at one time, this was a support that turned resistance. And that's why I like these levels here. Here's support turned resistance. That's why it's going to either reject there one more time, or it's going to break through and reject at this one. So these, these two levels are good. <clears throat> I mean, it, it could definitely just push straight up to this one. So just be aware of that. And then from a lower time frame perspective, if we're just looking at, you know, what's going on with the price action, well, can it come down to here? Yeah, it can. Let me just look at, yeah. See, th this is the dip I'm talking about. This is exactly what we just looked at on AGRS. I really feel like there's one more little dip to come. And I know it may not seem like it's little because we haven't had much pullback on a lot of these coins. Where's my thing at? But on uh, Reef, that would be, you know, five, six percent, something like that. Doesn't have to come all the way back to here. Uh, if we look at this range right here from a perspective of where is our support resistance, I mean, you could just from the imbalance here, you could just pull your fib and, and get a really quick, get some really quick feedback, um, which is not perfect. I mean, there's some, there's some support right there. But I'll just do some quick levels here. Yeah, I think this is a good level right here. Something around 20, 2150. And I'm talking about Satoshi's. You know, it's actually 002150. And, and for those that don't know, the terminology Satoshi's is just used for coins that have a lot of zeros in front of the actual price. So uh, I just shorten it to 2150. So either here it stops or it comes down here to, um, yeah, right around the 21 area, 2100. That looks correct to me. So, you know, maybe sweeps it like that, but it doesn't have to come all the way back to this. It can, but it doesn't have to. We'll just look at the fib on that real quick. Yeah, you're, you've hit the golden pocket, actually. So, honestly, it doesn't have to come down at all from here, especially with that bounce off of there. But I wonder where that support is coming from. Anytime you see a, a solid bounce like that, you got to think, well, there must be some support somewhere. And, and that's where this is right here. There is a good, and this is an order block here, but there is a good, um, actually a really good support line right there. And that's exactly where this wick touched on the daily chart. Yeah, I kind of like that because that was the previous imbalance down. And it's kind of the mid range of this whole range. So, you know, maybe 
it could still come down to it one more time, but maybe it's done and it's ready to start moving back up again. Just depends on what uh, Bitcoin does, of course. Yeah, 382 rejection, just like we talked about with uh, AGRS. Yeah, I would just say 2150 would be the final bottom, but only if it lost this uh, 2200 area. And, uh, you know, the, the usual method here. Let's see. Actually, this looks a lot like what Bitcoin's doing, doesn't it? Sometimes you have to take your wicks and touch the candle body like that. Or you could do this. You could take this wick and go down like that. And this is kind of a more aggressive uh, buying opportunity if it breaks above that. Because what you could end up having is just this. And even if it wanted to sweep and come back up like that. All right, so that's Reef. Let's look. I've got Matic here. I mean, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one because this one's real obvious. Look at your resistance here, here, here. Was support here, and then it lost it, but now it's trying to reclaim it. So you really just need to hold. This could be a really good buy. As long as you hold 94 cents, you know, you're off to the races. You're going to have some, you know, some slowdown here and here. Um, I just realized I didn't talk about, I didn't talk about price action on this one, or did I? You know, where it's headed, I mean. Anyway, there's your targets. I think I might have actually. All right, Matic. Um, this is an inverted head and shoulders. Looks real good. I mean, I would feel worse. You know, maybe this is a deviation, right? Uh, let's just take the other side of the coin. Maybe this is nothing more than a, you know, it gets above and then it rejects here and comes back down again. If something like that was to happen, that would mean Bitcoin is really struggling <clears throat> and it's going much lower to that 38K range. So just understand that that is a possibility. But you you built some, some a good range here on Matic and now you're back above it and uh, you know, you're trying to find support here, which it could dip a little bit under here. You know, my line's not perfect. It's just a zone. You know, it could dip a little bit under it first. But what you don't want to see is a four-hour candle close below it, um, especially on a daily chart. Or sorry, you don't want to see a daily candle close below it four hour it looks more like this yeah so I could see on the four hour it could even come down to here yeah that looks about right so just understand what you always want to be doing just drawing anytime you get these dips you just draw this and you wait I mean, you don't have to buy it yet if you don't want to just wait for this thing to be broken you get a four hour candle above that line, you know, it's ready to go up. But if you want to be buying support, you could buy here. And then if it closes a four hour candle below, then, you know, if you have confirmation after a couple four hour candles that it stays below, then you might want to let go of the trade. So th there's a couple of different ways to do it there. Or if you get something like this and then it comes back up and retests, I mean, that, that's a really good trade as well. There's a lot of different ways to play it. And as far as targets go, I actually haven't looked at this on Matic, but I'll do it in real time here. Order blocks all the way up. Uh, probably the most significant resistance area is right in there. So it's going to slow down a little bit at 128. What's the next one? Hmm. Dollar seventy three, maybe. Yeah, I would say dollar seventy or so. You'll see it do something like this. What did I say here? Maybe go sideways just a bit. I think I had dollar seventy or so. I don't know. It, it'd be something like this, and then eventually it'll be ready to go again. But you know, this one would take longer. This next area. And you're looking at 37 to 100% gain, maybe. All right, this is a friend of mine. Um, we, call, we call him Hot Rod. 
Uh, he told me about this one and it looks like it's just in a consolidation range, which is really good. I mean, it's a good find. This one has a lot of room to move. Um, I mean, you, you can also take your fibs on a longer time frame, by the way. Like here was the April top and then drag it all the way down. And now you've got some really solid levels to trade off of on a, on a macro time frame on a weekly chart. You don't even have to draw your lines if you don't want to, but you, you can just, you know, like I can hover over it here and hit alt H and put my line there if I want. And then I don't have to use fibs, but clearly, you know, you got a rejection here. I would say next time it gets back up to here, here to the 382 retracement, you're probably going to get a breakout because it'll be the third touch. Doesn't have to. I mean, if I had to to guess at what it's going to look like, it'll probably reject here one more time, then up, maybe here, play around a little bit, and then you know, uh, come back above it, and then you're going to have a lot of trouble right here because this is a lot of the. Uh, actually, it's a little bit higher. Well, you know, I take that back. There could be a little resistance here just because that was previous support, but really I'm looking more like this uh, order block here. So from a long-term perspective, it could have a gain of as much as, I don't know, I'd say like two and a half times your money, 265% all the way up to 300%. So that zone is where you could look at selling if you bought it here, uh, lower time frame. Let's just see if it's ready to buy and, and just to throw a different look into it. I'll bring up, um, I'll bring up uh, market cipher here. I would say this is a really good, I mean, you, you could just go ahead and do your range and say, okay, here's my range and not even regard this just yet. And then pull your fib. Actually, I think I wanted to do it the other way. And the only reason I'm doing this is just to find my um, support resistance levels quickly. So here's one. Here's a major one. Maybe here. That one. Or is it here? Sometimes you got to go to a higher time frame. Yeah, I like that one. And don't just take these fibs as, as gospel, you know, use your own, use your own head. All right. Something like that. Um, you also got this downtrend line here. Did a perfect retest. Kind of looks like those other ones we were looking at like reef where you might get a little dip here, reclaim and go. Looks right. I'm just trying to see if there's any confluence here. There's a little bit there. Maybe that. Could dip right into this little area. See what the short term fibs show. That would be right at the golden pocket, yeah. So good buy areas would be 0036. If, if it doesn't hold, then your next one would be 003445. And I don't think it would get under that. May not make it down to here. Just be aware of that. Sometimes it, it uh, just dips a little bit under the line. But what you're looking for is acceptance back in the range. So if, if this is your range, this purple line and this purple line, and it gets below it, then you just wait for it to get back above it and retest. And if you see that it holds, then you're ready to go. What would it look like if it held? Well, it just depends on what chart you're on. If you're on an hourly chart, you would wait for a couple hourly candles for confirmation. If you're on a four-hour chart, then usually if you get a full four-hour candle above, uh, it's going to be enough, but you can wait for another one just to verify if you want. And there's plenty of room for this to go up. So, you know, it's okay to wait and be patient with it. Okay. Here's ARPA. Um, somebody else told me about this one. I think it was Pip Snipers. Yeah. Pip Snipers told me about it. 
I think this one looks good as well, especially on low time frames. But on the higher time frame, it, it's it's a really hard chart to figure out because there's it's um it's really volatile. So what I what I did was is I've already got some levels here. And I think they're right anyway. Let's see. Better go to like a three day. When they're when they're real volatile like this, you gotta go to a extremely high time frame. Yeah, I had this wrong actually. <clears throat> so I've got that. Maybe there. Yeah, that looks about right there. I'm just lining up support resistance areas, especially major ones. Anyway, this one doesn't matter as much down here because I don't think it's coming down here. I think it's just about ready to go, maybe. Um, I think that's all I wanted to do here. Oh, I still need one here, don't I? Maybe here. Yeah, maybe right in here there's another line. So it's already touched the line once, just like Matic did, just like uh, Reef did. We go really far down and just look at the pattern. Yeah, it's another rejection, just like we saw on AGRS and uh, probably come back down here one more time to the 50. In fact, I had talked about this recently, I think on my Twitter that uh, 53 was about the area I was looking to buy. So even though this looks like it might be ready to go, it, it could have one more rollover. But, you know, being that it wicked already to this 53 area, maybe it is done. And it's just going to kind of go sideways a bit and then go. But you don't want to have a four-hour candle close below 53, I don't think. And then as far as targets go, um, you know, if you look up Pip Snipers on Twitter, he was talking about 50 was his first major take profit area. And I've got a method that I do that uh, showed basically the same target. But in general, if you just take a fib from here, from this big move up down to this wick, and then you put on your um, 1618, 1272. That's all I need. Let's just put a couple more on just in case. And I do all this on fib, you know, fib levels based on log scale, by the way. Where's my other one? Let's just see what levels we get here. Oh, I think I did the fib. Is it fib trend based? Yeah, there it is. I ended up getting around 51, 52 cents. So yeah, it's pretty close. But these are your levels coming back up uh, as it moves up. So you could use any of these levels. You can see the numbers here if you want to pause the video. Um, usually 786. Yeah, that's right at that. So that makes sense right there. It's probably going to be a little bit of resistance there at the uh, 13 cent area. What would that give you? It's about right there. 120% move, 130%. And then after that, you just take the whole move to 50. You're looking at about, it's about an 8X or so, something like that. <clears throat> okay. I think that's all of it. This is just that TET chart I used to look at cubic, but I think that's all of it. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully, um, you know, you enjoyed looking at these on-chain metrics. You know, here, here's an updated um, smart money token inflow if you want to look at that. And here is the latest signals uh, for what smart money is either buying or selling. I just want to end it with this. Acquired a lot of Prisma. That's a 61 times average over the last 24 hours. Uh, price is going up. Let's see if I can find another one. Here's ARB. Smart money acquired ARB. It's 14 times the, the usual average, which means it's probably going to find a bottom soon, I would think. It doesn't mean smart money knows every single time, but if you see 
a lot of people accumulating, it usually means the price is starting to go up. And actually, just to let me just do this real quick. I'm just going to throw a fresh chart on here for ARB. Yeah, look at it building market structure. That's great. Uh, you know, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Daily chart. Yep, you had a break of resistance there. And currently, you're at that order block right there. So if it breaks above that, it's gone. How high is this one gone? 124%. Actually, I don't know. I'll just add this to the list of the ones I'm looking at. I, I really didn't intend to, but this is one of the ways that I found movie, even though this one's probably an older coin, maybe. I'm looking at it on uh, coin market cap real quick. No, it's not an older coin. Huh. 2023, is that right? Arbitrum. Yeah, March 2023. That's what I'm showing on Coin Market Cap. Okay. All right, this is a little bit better view, I think. So here is your fib pool. Let's look at our. Okay, so it hit the golden pocket perfectly. Actually, the break of that golden pocket was really important, you know, because that was a lot of resistance at the time. See that resistance there was once support, big resistance. Now it's become support, hopefully. Uh, I don't expect that it would fall under it at this point, but we'll see. Oh, I meant to bring um, Market Cypher into the, some of these discussions, didn't I? All right. Money flow is thick in the green. RSI is turning down a little bit, meaning it, it's probably going to come down some, as is the uh, VWAP in the yellow area there. So I would expect it to come back and retest somewhere in here again. And we'll we'll look at it on lower time frames here. Might be getting a little bit of a divergence there to push up. It's hard to tell. VWAP turning up. When you get disjointed, um, these two lines here, one's RSI, one's stock RSI. When they're disjointed like that and not together, that means it could just go sideways for a bit before it's ready again. Uh, but, you know, it, it's clearly, you know, both of them are moving sideways, not like this where it's moving up. So you need to see this this upward momentum. Um, you yeah, know, the, the more these lines are together, the stronger the move is. This is a really nice, steady gain. That's what you want to see. So it, it continues going up longer. It's hard to tell with this one, actually. If it's going to, see, it's holding. The, if it's going to hold the 0.5, or it's going to come down one more time to this shorter term, which would make a lot of sense actually, because that was the imbalance. That okay, yeah, I think you're probably going to get a drop to uh, like a dollar thirty-eight or something, and then it'll be ready to go. But again, just use the the usual. Um, let's say if there's support, use the usual method of doing your trend line. And even if it gets below temporarily, if it gains acceptance, then that's all you're looking for. And then it'll start building strong market structure again. And a lot of times, again, this looks like an inverted head and shoulders. I think this makes sense as far as this move. Um, if you do get a break above the, if you get a four hour candle above this trend line, like, like if this is just going to hold, then that's where you would enter on the retest of that. And then if for some reason it lost the level again after you bought here, then you could just temporarily sell um, until it got back above. So there's there's a couple of different ways to do that because sometimes you just get a deviation above and it's a fake out. Uh, you know, So that's why sometimes you want to give it a couple candles to verify because you need market structure. You know, It's got to be higher highs, higher lows. You don't want to end up buying the top even if it's temporary. And, um, well, I should have showed market side. I'll, I'll do it next video. I'll, I'll show it better. But, you know, uh, market structure in general, market structure and price action is king. So 
Um, you know, these are just lagging indicators for the most part. But I think we look good. I'll try to update it on Twitter. I mean, if I see anything with Bitcoin looks like we're going to come down further or, you know, the alts don't look good, whatever, uh, I'll mention it. But so far, the thing that I saw last night is what I continue to see that alts could come down just a little bit and it could be as much as 10%. And then we're going to have a good start to January. Uh, and again, that's just my opinion. I don't know for a fact that's going to happen because, you know, the people that control these things, the whales, you know, they're the ones that can send the price down if they want to, and then the alts would suffer for it. Okay, well, hopefully y'all got something out of that, and uh, we'll do another one next week. Until then, watch my Twitter, at Bike for Sale, and, uh, you know, we'll, I always post there more than in, than doing videos. I just do one video a week, usually. All right, y'all have a happy new year.